In this video, I'll be working through the question you see on the screen from paper two of the 2024 Leaving Cert Ordinary Level exam. If you are looking for a different question from this paper, you should find a link to a playlist in the description below. I'll be doing all this on a whiteboard, hopefully so it's similar to what you're used to your teacher doing in the classroom. But remember, this isn't a classroom, we're on YouTube, so take advantage of that. Use the pause button, rewind, fast forward, watch it in high speed or slow speed, whatever helps you out. And if you do find this video or any of my videos useful, I would appreciate like, subscribe, all that stuff. What really helps out the channel the most is though, sharing it with someone that might find it useful. Uh, question 10 has a lot of questions about tennis. Um, it starts off telling us that in the Wimbledon tournament 2023, the fastest uh, served by a woman was uh, Arena Sablenka, I'm not sure if I said that name right, at 121 uh, miles per hour. And they want us to convert that into kilometers per hour. They tell us that uh, one mile is the same as 1.61 kilometers. So how do we combine that? Uh, one mile, uh, 1.61 kilometers, 121 miles, what's that going to be? Well, the change from 1 to 121 is just multiplied by 121. So we just do the same here. Uh, multiply 1.6 by 121 and that gives us, uh, let's see, 195 and that's kilometers per, per hour. So that's the answer to part one. Um, part two, they want you to convert one hour into seconds. Basically, how many seconds are in an hour? Uh, well, let's say one hour is, one hour is the same as 60 minutes. Um, and then 60 minutes, how many, uh, uh, there's 60 seconds in one minute. So 60 times 60 is 3,600 seconds. And uh, part three, they want you to use both these pieces of information to find out um, how fast the serve was in meters per second. So this was miles per, let me write in miles, I suppose, uh, miles per hour. This was kilometers per hour. What is it in uh, meters per second? Well, kilometers and meters, that should be an easy one. Let's, let's start over here, 195 kilometer per hour. Um, change kilometer into meter. Let's just multiply by a thousand. So that's um, 195,000 meters per hour. So we're sort of, we're on, on the way there. Um, next is we need to use 3,600. Hopefully that's clear. This is how many seconds is in an hour. How I would do this, uh, because so many students well, let me skip to the answer, sort of. The answer is going to be clearly this divided by this or this multiplied by this. I think uh, most students would go along with that. And honestly, I find about 20, 30% get it wrong. And they end up multiplying this by this. So what I would do before I think about the number is, I'd ask myself, um, does this get bigger or smaller? Um, so meters per hour. Uh, this is how many meters it would travel in one hour. What about in half an hour? So less time, if I made the time smaller, which I, I want to make it into seconds. If I made it smaller, would this get bigger or smaller? Um, so in half the time, it would travel half the distance. In 1,000th the time, it would travel 1,000th the distance. In 3,600th the time, and that's what it is. It's instead of hours, it's um, this number, divided by this guy and that's that's will give us meters per second and um, if you put that into a calculator you get a uh, 54.17 uh, meters per second and that's uh, rounded to two decimal places yeah that's what they wanted and um, in part b they talk about a tennis ball and they tell us the smallest size it's allowed to be is a radius so that's a radius of 3.27 and then they ask us find out the surface area of that ball. I think the English in this question is a bit bad because they say find out the surface area of this ball but they don't tell us what the size is. I think what they mean is this ball is in the smallest size ball uh, but a bit confusing English I thought. 
Uh, but basically what we're going to do here is we're going to take a tennis ball of radius or a sphere of radius 3.27 and we're going to find out the surface area of it. Um, the formula book, it has a formula for this. Actually I, I probably need to look it up myself. Um, it is A is equal to 4 pi r squared. That's the surface area of a sphere. And we have everything we need. A is equal to 4 pi. These are just numbers. We know these. Uh, cal use your calculator for pi. Um, R squared is here. 3.27 squared. That's the answer. Put that in a calculator to get it uh, a little better. And we get 134.37 uh, centimeters squared. Because it's, it's area. For part C, um, they, they give us a tennis ball again, but they point out that, we've probably all seen a tennis ball cut open, they point out that it's a bit of a thick bit of rubber and then air. And then they tell us the radius of the inner part of this tennis ball is 3.1, and the outer part is 3.4. And they want us to find out how much rubber there is, what's the volume of this rubber. So how do you do that? Um, it's not as hard as it seems. What we do is we get the volume of a the full sphere. Now these are spheres, by the way. These are three-dimensional, but I'll just stay drawing them as two-dimensional. We get the volume of the big sphere, uh, the one is 3.4, and we take away the volume of the smaller one. And what we're left with is, uh, is, is this sort of ring here. I can't draw that in three dimensions, <laughs> in three dimensions, unfortunately. So all we need to do is get the area of the, the volume, I mean, of the bigger one. Again, we go to our tables and we use, let me write it up here. The volume is four over three pi or cubed. So we use that for the big one. Uh, that's uh, four over three pi, um, what's the big uh, sphere would be 3.4 cubed minus the smaller one, four over three pi, 3.1 cubed and that equals our answer. So we put these in the calculator, you put them in separately here. If you want, uh, let's see, it's uh, 164 point something minus 125 about, and that all equals 39.85. That's the volume of uh, the, the rubber in this. And that's important, like a company would want to know how much rubber goes into every ball. Uh, to make a thousand balls, they need to calculate how much rubber they're going to buy. In part D, uh, they talk about, a very common question is, they talk about tr three tennis balls inside a, um, inside a cylinder, just like you'd buy. And uh, they ask you to find out what's the height of the cylinder, basically. They tell us the answer. They just tell us to find it ourselves as well. The height, uh, 20.4. Um, oh yeah, the, the balls themselves, the radius, now this is important, the radius of the ball is 3.4, not the height of them. So that's where some students would get, uh, get mixed up here. They'd go 3.4, 3.4, 3.4. That's not equal to 20.4. So it's, it's half of this is 3.4. So what's the total width? It's two times that, 6.8. So uh, the height is actually equal to 3 multiplied by 6.8 which is in fact what they told us we were looking for, 20.4. So that's part one. Uh, part two, calculate the volume of the cylinder. Um, give your answer correct in this whole number. So how big is this cylinder? Um, let me draw the cylinder again, just so it's a bit clearer, uh, like uh, this. So how, what's the volume of the cylinder? Again, you go to your tables, there's a formula for volume, it's pi, or squared h. Or, what's, what is or and what is h? h is 20.4. So what's the radius of this cylinder? Well, a tennis ball fits perfectly inside it. So it's the same radius as this. So uh, yeah, 3.4 is the radius. Um, so v is equal to pi 3.4 squared times 20.4. Is that, was that definitely 0.4? Yeah, okay. So what is that? Put it into your calculator. Just be careful. Put it in and you should get 
uh, 740 point something but to the nearest yeah to the nearest whole number 741 um, centimeters I believe centimeters cubed all right that's the answer to part two uh, part three says instead of a cylinder uh, how about we use a a rectangular box like this still going to put the three balls inside uh, the rectangular box and uh, what is the surface area what's the surface area of this um yeah so how how wide is it how deep is it and how high is it you need to figure those things out well there should be no difference between three balls uh, in a cylinder and three balls in this the height should still be 20.4 shouldn't it uh, the the total width still has to perfectly fit a ball in um, it should be the width of the ball 6.8 and again this side should be 6.8 so that's it it's just a rectangular shape just like this and um, the only thing to be careful is they didn't ask you for volume uh, I'd say if a good few students would have just multiplied these three and got a volume uh, they didn't ask for a volume they asked for a surface area so we need to get the area of this side this side the one around here and the one around the back plus the area of the top and the bottom so that's it, you can do uh, those eight different sums if you want, but hopefully you notice that a lot of them are the same. The front is 6.8 times 20.4. So is the side, so is the back, so is the other side. So there's actually just four of these, four times those. Um, so yeah, let me write that uh, here. There's four multiplied by 6.8 multiplied by 20.4. That's the four sides. There's also two of these, uh, two, top and the bottom. What's that? That's 6.8 times 6.8. And there's two of them. So we'll add on to this 2 times 6.8 times 6.8. Just put that into a calculator. And uh, you get uh, 647.36. And that's centimeters squared. And that answers all of question 10, which finishes uh, all of paper two. Um, if you have any follow-up questions, if I made any mistakes or it's just something uh, you want clarification on, just ask me in the comments. I'll do my best to answer. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.